G'day everyone, David from Down Under Projects. So this week's project is all about how we distribute the power that we created from last week's project where we built a battery box and we made some brand new battery cables. Now we've got the original start battery that was in the boat, but we've added to it a 105 amp hour, I think it's a full river brand of absorbed glass mat um, deep cycle battery. And that's going to power all those house loads, you know, your lighting, everything, your sounders, your uh, stereo, whatever. In fact, this came in the mail yesterday and I want to get this fit. So this is just a, uh, a little accessory port. So you can either have that cigarette st style um, of power or USB for these days with everyone and their phones and whatever else. So I want to get that in. That is actually going to a gang of six switches. All the other ones are for lighting. So running lights, anchor lights, cabin lights, deck lights, lights for in the hold or around the engine. Um, doesn't take long and before you know it, you've got wires running everywhere. So the whole concept of this video is to take that power from those big battery leads up to a distribution board and then slowly break the size of the wire down as required to the various loads and be able to use less wire, make it a bit neater and all brand new. So let's go down the boat and see how we go. So I might also just try to make sense of this uh, so that I can get rid of it and um, set my own battery switch up. I have no idea where that purple wire is going or what it does, but uh, yeah. I think it's time to, if I get a chance, to get rid of that and tidy up some of that spaghetti down there as well. So, here we have the wiring for the boat. I think I can uh, make a few improvements, I hope. Looking at all the wiring on Helen J, the old fishing boat, she's, um, she's not a young boat and neither is the wiring. The wiring is corroded everywhere um, and yeah, so it's totally ineffective and it's downright dangerous. And uh, so I've decided to totally rewire Helen J. So the rewiring of Helen J is another project. But anyway, at the moment where I'm at, is uh, just drawing up a wiring diagram for the boat. Not here. I've been able to stumble upon this resource on YouTube, a uh, guy by the name of Jeff Cote. He's got a company called Pacific Yacht Systems and he has got so much information out there on electronics and wiring up boats. It's just a fantastic resource. And uh, although I don't know this guy or his company, thank you so much, Jeff. It's, uh, I've been binge watching it and over and over to make sure I get uh, this plan down pat so that, uh, so that I'm not wasting wires and I'm not um, doing dangerous work and uh, that I just get the best bang for my buck once I put the system in. Um, you can download, his, he's got PDFs of schematics of how he likes things set up and stuff like that. So it's a really, really good resource. Another good resource, once again, not associated with this gentleman, but Nigel Calder. If you haven't heard of Nigel, um, then, you know, make yourself aware of this book and uh, it's got everything in it. The current thing I'm looking at there is just cable runs and a, a concept called voltage drop, which you can learn all about from that other YouTube site or this book, you know, it's all there. But for me, um, I'm, I just want to get it done. So I'm thinking, okay, what's my total current on a certain uh, cable? 
oh, you know, I want to run the bilge pump. How much is, how many ants are running through it? What's its drawing? Is the wire uh, capable of handling that? What fuse size do I need? All that sort of stuff. So at the moment, just looking at, if I'm happy to have a 10% drop in my voltage, how far can I go and what, what gauge of wire do I use? And the same if I want 3%, you know, for something that's more sensitive. It's all there. I don't have to crunch the numbers. It's all here. So yeah, it says on here, this book should come as standard equipment with every boat. And it's probably very good advice. So how do you go about coming up with a wiring diagram for your boat? Before I go further, I'll, I'll explain about this switch. Once again, no allegiance to this company, but it's a good system, it's at a battery. So you've got this, uh, this battery isolation switch, for want of a better word. And, uh, and then you've also got a what they call an automatic charging relay. You can learn how to wire all these up, you know, on either Jeff's or many other YouTube sites. So anyway, that's, that's this part here, your uh, automatic charging relay is what this one's called. And it's essentially wired to both, bo both battery banks. And it just means that if your alternator has charged up your engine, um, because you started, you've got a full battery, it's, it's taken nothing to start it, so it quickly charges that back up to top. It's got all that extra energy that's essentially going nowhere, so it may as well come over and charge up your house battery. Because your house battery is the one that, you know, you've already turned your fridge on, you've turned lights on, someone's put the stereo on, and you've got your depth sounder running, and you've got all these things happening, so that's already starting to run down. So if you can keep that full, charge that up, happy days. So then you're cruising off to your destination. Mine house bank, bank comes up to what's called a unswitched distribution block that will have the bilge pump and the VHF essentially and I'm pretty sure this is one thing I've got to check but I'm pretty sure I can run a 240 volt charger into that area and a, my solar charge going into that area because essentially it's just going to go up and and power and take take the load off your battery um, so it's going to provide power to these other loads so anyway that comes up goes on to the other side of the switch and goes up and that's this is basically the stuff you're switching off when you uh when you flip that switch off because essentially you want to keep this stuff going uh, you want an automatic bilge pump to kick in whether you're on the boat or not you know that sort of stuff and once again you have these distribution blocks and so you run all you run a wire to there and then all the little wires off it and the same with each of those jeff um, describes it as like a tree with lots of branches and i, I really relate to that uh, so that's, that's basically my wiring plan as it stands at the moment. And um, I've been trying to work out wire sizes and American wire gauge versus our. These are the questions you start asking yourself. Then, you know, you get online or you get your, your catalogues from your various suppliers. And it's got, you know, what they supply, tinned wire, zero gauge. You know, they're saying it's got a current capacity of 200 to 500 amps. You know, you can research that and say, okay, it's also, $25 a, a lineal meter. So you go, well, maybe I can get away with the two gauge. Two gauge here is saying it's 160 amps. You know, this is a bit of marketing stuff, but you can refer to other resources and work out, okay, it's 160 amps for how long, at, at what temperature, etc., etc., etc. Believe me, go and look at that um, Pacific Yacht Systems, you'll, you'll get your head around it. But I can look at that and go, okay, now we're talking 16.95 a meter. And Maybe I can use that. Maybe there's sometimes a disadvantage to having too thick a cable. Anyway, so that's where I'm at. I managed to get these panels down at the tip, down at the reuse shop. It's obviously just someone's um, power board uh, from their house, like their mains switchboard, and uh, it's been dismantled. They're in really good nick, and I thought, well, it's probably a good little surface to mount all my bits and pieces on. So I'm just starting now, and we'll see how we go, putting all the bits and pieces. It's good to be able to do it here rather than on the boat, and then I can just attach this board somewhere, uh, up in the coach house somewhere, so it's close to any switch loads that might be there, like whatever. What's there? Lights and bits and pieces.
so I'm making good progress on my circuit board for want of a better word I've got the main switch the battery switch battery isolation switch some people call it uh, so that's good to go it will be fed through here this will run off to the battery this is my unswitched loads which is the solar panel the photovoltaic controller the auto bilge I don't know if you can read that and the VHF and there'll be another one um, I've got my solar controller here my photovoltaic charge controller and I've just checked and there is a 30 amp fuse inside here down there just a normal 30 amp blade fuse which will protect that I've currently got a 15 amp fuse here I'm just going to check what the 6 mil wire um, can handle but uh, yeah, I'm just trying to think how many amps are going to be punched through the panel. I think it's got a maximum of about 11 anyway, but I'll double check that. But anyway, so that's getting there. Um, and it won't be too much longer. I'll be able to make up a box and take all this down and basically plug it into the boat. I had a ground terminal block or bus board. Um, I was trying not to use it. And then I thought, why? why? Why bother? I'm going to have a bunch of different grounds for the switched loads. So just put the unswitched off here. Gives me a good way of running. The ground will be coming in here and the positive um, off the house battery will be coming in as well from this area. So it gives me a good way of coming up and across. Keeps it all neat and tidy. So that's worked out pretty well. Just knocked up a cable and got that all sorted. And I've been wondering how am I going to mount this in the boat and I think I might be able to use it. Um, it's flimsy but it's got uh, sort of a form of dovetail joints so I am thinking that uh, and, and the beauty of it having this perspex cover keep any splashes off I'm thinking I might be able to just cut, cut most of the back out which will allow this to mount in there and then just trim the rest of that board. So that's my plan, I think. And then I just take this down and um, mount it on the boat somehow. Okay, so the concept I think is right, but I just don't think this is going to be strong enough. Just think, if I'm going to go to the trouble of making a back, backing board, I may as well just make a box, router out a, a groove all the way around so this slides in on it, this will be the backing board. And then just slide this across the top. So this is the area where I hope to put the switch panel, which is just there at the moment. Um, that's my solar panel wire. These are existing wires. I'm going to uh, sort of chase and find out where they go. This is where the two wires run through uh, for the light mast and I want to replace those. Uh, probably should have a look and see if it's tinned but I don't think it is so I think I'll just replace them anyway. So I use them as mousing and I'll pull the other ones through. Um, and this looks like it was for, I think this might have been to power the light that was here. And there's a fourth one going through here as well. So basically a bit of uh, investigating and uh, removal of the wire spaghetti to try and make some sort of uh, sense of it all and to try and um, find a way to locate that and then run all my switch loads back into the box and all the wires from up on the roof back into here up on the cabin top so i need to come up with a way to attach that up here and so i think what i'll do is put a little bit of angle that i've got on there on the inside and then run these bolts into the top of the box and then maybe another bracket down here and another one around this side. But that's, I don't want to go through there to the outside, so we'll see. Probably, probably this bracket, another one down here, and then maybe one going across the back. Take some more load. We'll start with the first one and see how it comes up.
So I'm removing all of the existing cables. And this is how I'm running the house. So the house will come down here. I'll have to get some conduit to put this in and through there. And then I'll get, I've got some other conduit at home. I'll, I'll use orange, but for now this will work. Um, and the, the, uh, the ground will just go down onto the engine there. The, um, the positive will go down and over onto the house battery there. Quite a short run really, I'll measure it later. This is where the ground's going to go, I'm using this because it's a nice clean connection. Uh, and I've just made up this terminal end, which is uh, nice and clean and should give a good ground. And it's a short run up to the um, circuit board. together I had a couple of beers and I thought well I could have a crack at connecting the solar panel so I did and uh, other than tidying up a few wires we've got an absorb charge because the batteries are full anyway we're currently sitting at 14.5 volts I'll just photovoltaic in 2.4 amps yeah that's fantastic it's all working so those figures are last day, last one day, last two days, um, and they're old figures. So yeah, a little absorb charge trickling in to top up the um, house battery. It's pretty bloody good, I'm excited. Yeah. 